over. You can just state your name one more time. Thank okay. You so um, okay, great. Um, I'm Arielle with Nakamson PC. So just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, the ZBA hearing for this proposal is going to be on May 3rd at 2 o'clock p.m. and that is a public hearing. So I'm going to share my screen now um, and then afterwards I'll be happy to take any questions and Jeff I know is going to introduce himself to you as well. Okay, you guys should all be able to see my screen now. So 1637 Naudane Street, it's pretty straightforward. We're just seeking to comply with Philadelphia's recent regulations requiring a, a variance for short-term uh, visitor accommodations. <clears throat> this is gonna be everything I take you through throughout the presentation. We're gonna look at the notice of refusal, other nearby Airbnb listings, um, and then the Airbnb listing information for this for 1637 Nardine Street, uh, the amenities it offers, reviews from former um, tenants staying there, the zoning map, photographs of the property and photographs of the interior of the property, architectural plans and drawings, and the RCO meeting notice that we sent out in advance of this meeting. We're also going to look at the deed and the application for appeal. So as I said, pretty straightforward, just short term uh, visitor or visitor accommodations um, is all we're seeking uh, because we're, we want to make sure we're in compliance with Philadelphia's new regulations. This is a pretty popular area for Airbnbs. There's a bunch of them all around. It's also very close to different hospitals. And I believe a lot of people stay here that are, are going to the hospitals nearby. Um, this is the Airbnb listing that's advertised. It hasn't been advertised since we've been seeking this variance. Um, I just wanted to point out here that it has quiet hours are between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. on weekdays and 11 p.m. and 8 a.m. on weekends. And people who violate that are subject to a $500 fine. It's really important to Jeff and Faith to enforce this. So what they ended up implementing is there's a program called noise aware and it's basically a plug-in that you put into the property and it will notify the owners of the house um, if the volume in the property goes up above a certain decibel. So when they get those notices, they go and they message the tenants and say, hey, you guys need to keep it down or else we're going to enforce this $500 fine. <clears throat> the um, Airbnb also offers a bunch of different amenities, especially significant is family, amenities for families. So Jeff and Faith bought this property so they could more easily visit their parents who are both in Pennsylvania. And they also lived around here when they met and stayed around here for a while before moving to Maine. So it, as I'm sure people on this call might be aware, it does get difficult to travel with younger children. So it makes it easier to just have someplace that's already set up for them to go and stay. Uh, they stay here for about a month, a year, um, and they, provide a crib, a pack and play, and just stuff to make it more easy for families to travel. Now there's a, a lot of reviews, 120, 122 reviews with 4.97 stars. So just as tenants are able to review the landlord, landlords are also able to review the tenants. Um, and Jeff and Faith do not accept any tenants that have had previously poor reviews or have no reviews at all. So in other words, if they're going to allow someone to rent the space out, that person needs to come with positive previous reviews from past landlords. So just a couple pages of reviews. Uh, this zoning map, it is RSA 5. It's right along a bunch of public transportation. It's in a great part of the city, as I'm sure everyone on, on this call is aware. Here's the front of the property. This is uh, to the right of the property, to the left of the property, and interior photographs. So it's very well maintained.
Um, these are the drawings for the property. You walk right into the living area and the back is the kitchen. The second floor is one bedroom in the front and a bedroom in the bath with a full bathroom here. Um, and the basement is also just black space with another bathroom. This is the RCO meeting notice that was sent out in advance of this meeting. We sent it to 142 people as required by the city of Philadelphia. This is the certificate showing that we mailed it out and the deed transferring ownership over to Jeff and Fee. And the application for appeal. So I've stopped sharing. I'm going to allow Jeff just to introduce himself and Faith as well, um, just to say hi, and then we're happy to take any questions you might have. Hello, uh, my name is Jeff Whalen. I'm here with my wife, Faith. Uh, so the reason we purchased this in 2020, 2020, 2020, right around the time of uh, the pandemic. And uh, the reason we did was that we wanted a place for us to visit our families. We have two young boys to visit their, their grandparents and it was just a great spot. We had lived here for five years in the graduate hospital areas and we really loved it. So when this place came up and it was a beautiful place, we decided if we, we could do this if we had some supplemental income with the Airbnb. So we decided to move forward with that purchase. And up to this point, it's been great. Um, we love the area. I think that we've treated the area well. And uh, I'll just let Faith say a few things. Sure. So let's see if I'm in there. I'll just mirror what Jeff says. Uh, he and I met in Philadelphia. We love the opportunity to be there to visit family and friends and expose our boys to a place that we used to live. Um, and like Jeff said, this is um, the supplemental income of short-term rentals is the only way that this would make sense for us. And we have felt that we've been very responsible um, with renting this place out in respect to our neighbors. And of course, it's a very valuable asset to us that we love to use on our own. So it's extremely important for us to have only tenants who are respectful of our property and then in turn obviously respectful of the surrounding area and the neighbors um <clears throat> we are picky i would say on on who we allow to stay there or as picky as you can possibly be by vetting airbnb um profiles and you know we would just absolutely maintain that responsibility of hosting responsibly in the neighborhood Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, we're happy to take any questions you might have. Um, my colleague, Alan, is also going to be um, helping out on this part of the call. I, I have a question. Yes. Uh, before you purchased the, the property, did you attempt to get uh, the- Please identify yourself. The... Uh, my name is Jim Marsh. I live on Nordain Street, a couple doors down from 1637. Sorry. Um, I'm sorry, sorry. First, we're gonna try to um, just hear from the committee and then we'll go to the public for questions. So just hang on, hang tight. Yeah. Let's make sure that the presentation is complete. Okay, she asked for questions, so, okay. All right, I thought Alan wanted to speak. Um, no, I was just, if, I, if there's any questions um, to answer, I may, um, interject, but that's about it. I think, you know, we, we gave a great overview of uh, what we intend to do. Okay, great. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't mean to cut anybody off. Um, I just want to quickly go to the, to our CCRA zoning committee first. Um, if anybody has any questions or clarification points that they want to ask, um, Alan or Ariel or the owners. Um, yes, Ben. Benzie. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the uh, of the current status of the law regarding visitor accommodations. Uh, what would be the uh, legal hardship 
for which you would uh, uh, feel this would qualify for a variance? Well, we purchased the property um, in early 2020. I believe the laws were enacted thereafter. Um, so um, that would be one of the unique hardships here under the circumstances. The use is not changing other than the individuals in the property are staying on a short-term basis rather than a long-term basis, but the use is staying the same. All right. Have you attempted to lease it out on a long-term basis? Um, no, because the purpose of the purchase was for my clients to be able to use the property because they they wanted wanted to visit uh, their family, their you know their parents, um, and that was the whole purpose of it. They're they're not here to be investors. It was helped to supplement their income uh, or supplement the mortgage payments, tax payments, and insurance payments. So it boils down to an economic issue for them. Is that correct? Well, the undue hardship is a change in law. So if, if under the prior law, they wouldn't have need this, this special um, or this variance. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Well said. Um, does anybody else have any questions from the committee? Oh, I see the other Ben, Ben W. Yeah, just as a point of fact, prior to this, um, technically, the compliance, although it wasn't enforced aggressively by the city or Airbnb, you couldn't do this more than 180 nights a year, even if they were, even if it was their primary residence. The, the law did change, but their use wasn't compliant in 2020. Yeah, yeah I, I'm going to ask Jeff the question. I don't know how often. How often do you rent a place? Would you say? We... In 2020, we didn't run it more than 188 days. Yeah. But I can't say for certain after 2021 whether it was over 180 days. We might need a moment to do that. Yeah, but they've been very discerning, you know, in the sense of, as you saw the, the, the inside of the property, uh, it's well maintained. Um, they stay there in themselves. It's family oriented, and they're cognizant of the fact that you know individuals are staying there, or more individuals are staying there um, over time, um, or different individuals. So you know they've you know put you know you know sensors in place in case the the you know there's any noise issues or stuff like that. Um, what wasn't mentioned during the presentation was that after every resident leaves the um jeff and, and faith have a housekeeping service that cleans the property takes the trash off site so they're responsibly dispo uh, maintaining and disposing of trash in the property as well great thank you um does anybody else from the committee have anything to add okay great um so, and now I will take um, any questions from the community or the just the, the greater community. And I know Jim, you had a question. So go ahead and you can go first. Thanks. Um, so well, my question. Sorry, if you could just state your name and address. I'm please. sorry, Jim Marsh. Okay. Jim Marsh, M-A-R-S-H. I live a couple doors down on Nordane Street. Um, so my question has been, my question is just, when you were contemplating buying the property, did you check on the state of the law regarding the zoning for your use before you bought it? Well, so again, um, Jim, the law changed afterwards. It, so my clients purchased the property in early 2020. I be, believe the laws changed in 2021. Um, so at the time of purchase, they were allowed to do what, what we're seeking to do. Okay, well, my question is, Prior to the purchase, regardless of what the state of the law was at the time, did did the the owners, current owners, check for what the current at that time status of the law was, even though it changed later? Um, I'm trying to unmute myself here. There. Yeah. yeah. We when we began looking, we did specifically every property that we had looked at when we were working with the real estate um, agent. 
would make sure, sure that there didn't seem to be any rules against Airbnbs. We did have one or two properties that we really liked that we looked at that were part of apartments within a, a building, a multi-unit building, and they specifically did not allow Airbnbs. So we did feel like we did our due diligence. We knew that any property that we wanted to buy, we wanted to be able to comply with that. So we were not aware when we purchased this that there would be any reason why we could not do a short-term rental. Uh, Re Rebecca, this is Bob Lane. May I ask a question, which sure, just I was aware of earlier? Yeah, this, I'm ahead. Bob Lane. I'm a committee member, and this, I guess it's a question for you, Alan. Uh, Ariel had said at the outset that you were looking for a variance. Are you now saying you're looking for a non-conforming use? That it was legal before the law changed? I mean, that's a good argument, Bob. <laughs> I'm not making the argument by asking what you're asking. What no, you're I mean, I mean, technically, we're asking for a variance. Um, you could argue that that variance within that argument is that um, it's a non-conforming use because the uh, use that's, existed. Well, that's up to you. But I just didn't yeah. know what you want to make sure I knew what the yeah. request was. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Can I ask another question? This is Jim Marsh again. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, my question is just, do you plan any further construction if you were to able to continue operating as a BNB? Would Are you planning any further construction on the site, on the building? No, we bought the house completely renovated. So we never really performed any construction on the home other than things that needed to be redone. So we had an issue, the sewer line outside of our home um had an issue so they had to do road work for that again that wasn't related to any problems within our home but it did cause problems within our home so that was taken care of and we had the roof redone um but other than that we haven't had any construction done and we don't plan to do any construction it's completely brand new inside so we're happy with it as is i guess my last question is partially fact related I mean, you, you were aware that next door to your the, the building that you bought, there's a, a huge school mm -hmm. next door that basically takes up minimally half the block. They put a they just put in a huge addition on it within the last couple of years. It we have a lot of school activity. There's the street and the neighbors have a lot to uh, uh, you know put up with, so to speak, with the school. And all the activities with this very large school at this point. So, uh, and a, a, you know, an additional, and there have been uh, the occasional loud parties at the um, the site you're building late at night. And even if they get notice to calm it down, uh, if if that's even cured, that takes a while. So, we we have a lot to contend with here on the street. And uh, one more thing that a B and B, um, I I question whether that's appropriate. So. I'll just say that. When you say building, I'm just making sure we're talking about the, do you mean something's actually being constructed? What, you mean in, in your building? You said in the place that we're building. Uh, no, no, I'm not saying that you are con conducting building on, on your, uh, on, in your, your b, &B spot. No, I'm not saying Okay. Yeah, and then um, Jim, just one more point. Um, we're, we're not we're not trying to increase the density of this property. Um, you know, it is we're not trying to convert this RSA five property to a multifamily uh, dwelling. We're and we're not and we don't rent by the room. Um, and you know, all we're trying to use is this single family home for single family purposes, rather than renting thirty days or more. We're renting less than thirty days. So the use is staying the same. Um, and uh, like I said, my clients, you know, unlike if they were renting a property for long-term um, occupants, you know, they've taken special measures in place to make sure that every time the occupants leave, uh, the place is cleaned, uh, trash is disposed of offsite, uh, and they do have some type of noise meter in there uh, to make sure that uh, people are held accountable. I believe also that there's a restriction on our Airbnb that it only allows for four people at once. So we're not renting to large groups or anything like that. Okay, well, as I as I say, we have a lot to contend with with this, this 
big, big school we have on the block already. There have been a couple of loud parties. You know, that's always an issue, even if the, the sound gets tamped down after a period of time. So, you know, that's, that's our situation on the street. So that, that kind of argues against, especially a short-term rental rentals. So the traffic is increased traffic with, with the B&B. We've already got a ton of traffic with the school. So well, I think whether there's someone living in there permanently versus four people at a time renting it, I don't know that we can argue that there's that many more people. Either someone's going to be occupying the house, it could be four people year round, or it could be four people at a time doing it as a short-term rental. So us not having a short-term rental is not going to take people out of that property. No, I'm just saying the in and out, you have various different people you know, the, the, the turnover, the, you know, the increased sort of instability, it's, 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 I think it's going to be an increase in traffic as opposed to as your example, where you have just one, you know, family staying there. So that, that's just uh, my uh, observations on our situation here on the street. And uh, that's what I want to say. And, and we, we do have, have it listed as, as there's, there's no, no parking, parking that, that they have to park off site. We, yeah. We're not, we don't want to have a debate going back and forth between applicants and, and committee. If you're a, a person of the uh, neighborhood, state your point, relate it exactly to the variance, but it, it's unseemly to go back and forth. If you made your point, uh, we understand it. Thank you. Okay, I, I thank you. I mean, I, I, that's the point of the meeting, I thought. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Charles and Jim. Um, is there anybody, Ben, do you have something quick that you would like to add that hasn't been stated? Yeah, just a quick question. Do they have a renter's license? Uh, well, so you, at this moment, the answer is no, they're not renting it. Um, I, again, I, I think they need a special, uh, not a renter's license, but a, a, if they're lucky enough to get this variance, they'll need some type of what's called visitor accommodation license. And that's what the purpose of this variance request is. But you can't use a, a rental license for short-term accommodations like this. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. I don't think there's anybody else. Is there anybody else from the community that would like to speak or ask a question regarding this case? Okay, and I don't think there's any other committee members that would like to speak. Um, so thank you, that was a very thorough presentation. Um, and I think we should move on to our second case, um, which is- Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Which is 2321 Spruce Street. Um, the reason for the refusal is um, off-street parking. Um, this is in a parking um, control area and the and the, the so there's a parking refusal on this and then also um, a fence refusal on this um, the maximum allowable height fence in this um, according to the zoning is four feet and this is proposing a 10 foot four high fence um, and the opacity is regulated at 50%. Um, and so I welcome the presenter of the next 2321 Spruce Street um, to please um, start the presentation. Good evening, everyone. My name is Darwin Bove. I'm at the Obermeyer Law Firm, and I am glad to be here. I'm with the owner of, of the property, 2321 Spruce Street with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Krupnik, if you can wave to everyone. Um, they've, they, they are a nice young family. And when they bought the per property, it turns out that the existing parking was never legalized. So what you're, what you're seeing here is parking that already exists. And we also are looking to match what is taking place in that area by putting a fence up and which created the refusal. So if we can just start. Also, I have uh, Gabrielle Canu, if she can raise her hand. 
and wave we are all looking to, she's the architect that that answered their prayers and if we can let's just start with the refusal can everyone see this i hope so <laughs> uh so we're looking at the initial refusal and it mentions off street parking shall not be provided for any one or two family located in residential parking control area, except for parking accessed by a shared driveway. Um, and then the second refusal is talking about the fence height. So what's allowed is four feet and we're proposing 10 feet and four inches. If there's a way that I can switch my screen, I am not technically savvy, so if everyone could bear with me. Can everyone see this? No, uh, I think maybe we just have to reshare. Oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. So this is this is their property, but I and I wanted to use Google maps just to walk around the corner it, so everyone can see. it's not the property it's the one on the other it's side there. on the other side nope nope <laughs> <laughs> there it is the red yes. one yes right there mm -hmm. so as you can see Just wanted to walk around the corner. Going down Manning Street. And this is the back of their property. So that it's been in existence for quite some time. And this is, in essence, they want to match what's happening here next door. Uh, let me stop sharing and go back to my other screen. And we submitted an application once we got the refusal and here is the site plan. So this is the front of the property, here's the back and what we are proposing to do is to just create a fence line and using the existing walls on both sides of our property and just to make sure that the driving area is protected, just like the other properties on that block. Let's see, I think oh, this is, so here is the rendering. Oh, and because this property, what is part of the historic fabric, it was presented to the historic commission and our proposal did get approved just last week, March 20th. So this is what we're proposing, this fence. It will be along the same fence line that currently exists. As you can see, this is just a screen of how far it would go looking west, looking east, just the aerial views, looking at the property. And in essence, let me see if I can reduce this, our site plan again. Um, I think after that, we have our letters of support and let me just resize this. And just remind me, David, how many letters did we get? 
if some of the names you can recognize? Uh, 35, I believe. 35. Support from nearby neighbors. Yes. And we submitted this package to the zoning committee. Um, my letter requesting our meeting, uh, also announcing that we have our, our hearing on April 26 at 2 p.m., proof of our mailings. And with that, I, I'm, we're more than happy to answer questions. Again, because this building has been in existence. Oh, let me stop sharing. It, 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 it actually met the standards of the Historic Commission because of, of its many years being in, in, in the manner that it has been. It is now receiving new life with this new family in, and, and we're just looking to, to make this fence just uh, the, so as 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 beautiful as the red brick that covers this building. So with that said, that we're here to answer any questions. We have our architect, we have the owners, and we're here to to answer your question. Thank you very much. Um, that was a really great and thorough presentation. I see we already have a committee member, um, Ben, who would like to ask a question. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, thank you. Great presentation. Just to be clear, when your clients purchased this, it was a multifamily because the city website still has it as five to 50 apartments, and they converted it to a single, which would then make the parking non-compliant, correct? Correct. So they're using it as a single family going forward. Correct. Great, thank you. Thank you, Ben. Um, uh, Veronica. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. <clears throat> I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the materials and the type of uh, fence that you're proposing. Uh, that's a great question for our architect because she went over the materials very thoroughly with, with the owner. And I think, Given the smile on their faces, I think they're happy. So, Gabrielle? Um, yes, I'm happy to, to take it to field this question. So, I'm Gabrielle Cano, I'm the architect. Um, we've proposed a brick surround, two foot piers on either side, or a little bit under. I think they're 18 inch piers on either side, and a brick fascia going across the top. The actual material of the garage door is a metal garage door, um, it's suited for exterior use. The garage is not an enclosed garage on the inside. And this is one of the very few types of garage doors that can be used when it's not an enclosed garage. Um, the exact color of the garage door, it will be a painted material. A um, Right now we're proposing for it to be a dark brown bronze, which would be historically relevant. Um, and that is also what we had shared with the Historical Commission. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Oh, wait, one other thing, we are proposing lights to be above the garage door, um, part of this neighborhood security and safety and comfort. So there are some um, light fixtures that are shown in the renderings as well. Thank you. Um, Bob? Did you have a question? I, uh, I don't have a question, but for the record, um, I just need to say officially that I'm family friends with both the owner's family and the architect's family and don't feel I can be objective. So I will not be voting on this case as in accordance with our policies. Well, wait, Bob, we're not family. <laughs> your parents, your mother, were, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I have a question. What is the history of the um, uh, prohib prohibition against the fence? Is that is that a zoning uh, ordinance that was passed years ago? Yes. And, that, and how did the next door neighbor get a fence, if you know? I actually I don't know how the next door neighbor got a fence. Um, I would presume because LNI hasn't enforced it that they 
too must have received a variance. Um, but but the, under the code, uh, it's always been a question of, of having fences below six feet. And here in this, in this zoning classification, fences have to be four feet. Well, uh, knowing that a fence is supposed to be less than four feet, what is the reason to go above that when you're really creating a wall? You're, you're, you're creating something that could be potentially very forbidding when you're walking down that back street. Well, I think it's also a question of security for, for them as well to also have an area where they can come in late at night and not having to worry that getting out of the car that they too, or that they could suffer some ill will. Well, we realize that, but and, there's a reason for not having a fence go over four feet. And I understand. And what we do see is that we're, we're, we're in betwixt and in between, because if we were to provide a zoning class of a zoning compliant fence, you know, we probably wouldn't have gotten the historic uh, uh, approval. Okay, understood. Um, thank you for that clarification. Um, Benjamin Zuckerman. You're muted. I think you just have to unmute yourself. Ben, you're muted. No, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm a neighbor of you know, Gabrielle Cano. She's a horrible, terrible person. I don't know why you'd ever hire her as an architect, uh, but you're stuck with her. Uh, in any event, I, uh, I, I think that this is a nice uh, way of dealing with these kind of fences. Uh, I think the bricks around is very attractive. Uh, and if you, uh, there's, a, there's a fence just next door just like it. I don't think it detracts from the neighborhood. In fact, maybe with that door there, it's much nicer than looking at a couple of cars and trash cans and whatever else gets parked in the parking lot. May I, may I ask a question? Quick Go question. Mm -hmm. Am I am I right to assume both the properties to the east and west are uh, supportive? Is that correct? So uh, we have knocked and called and lettered those two properties. Um, but we have not been able to reach them. They're both renters and they don't seem to be home. I, I mean, I'm, I must have knocked at their, both of their doors five times at least and stood outside and waited for probably 30 minutes for the one that had multiple renters and we just couldn't get in touch with anyone. And for the other property, my husband emailed the broker and asked him specifically to get in touch with the owner. Um, and, and cold called them in Grove City, Pennsylvania <laughs> about yeah. times. But the property directly behind us, which is the one that would be, I guess, most impacted, uh, which is uh, John Jonathan Tory, I believe, we got their signature. Um, all the people who are on the courtyard part of our yard were supportive because they were excited about the security of, frankly, people being able to get back there. And the neighbors um, immediately on our block to the left and right. But we went and it's actually a nice way for us to meet our neighbors. Mm -hmm. We went and met everyone we could and we got 35 letters, mm -hmm. but hopefully that proves we were at least trying. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, thank you so much. Anybody else from the committee have any questions or comments? Okay, great. Um, anybody from the community? Don't see any raised hands or anybody in the chat. Um, okay, well, I think that's all then. Um, that was a very thorough presentation. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'm sorry, did we, did we have a David, Wish, excuse me, David Wishnick who likes to speak? My name is Veronica Offlins and I'm- a I'm so sorry, I don't see anybody, but go ahead, um, David. I cannot see any raised hand or anything. Sorry, sorry, I didn't see you there, David. Hi, I, I couldn't figure out how to raise my hand. I'm sorry. Oh, about I see that. you now in the chat. Sorry about that. Go oh, ahead. No, no problem. And can you uh, just um, let us know your address, please? Sure, sure. So I'm on uh, 2200 block of Lombard, so uh, about three blocks away, uh, but in the neighborhood community. 
Uh, and I just wanted to say the reasons why I support uh, this, this fence and the variance that they're asking for, um, I think it really adds to the aesthetic of the neighborhood. Uh, and and uh, if anything, uh, adds to the the safe and community feel that we're all hoping for in the neighborhood. Uh, so to have a, a conforming fence that really kind of fits with the the height level of the neighbor uh, is, seems not only appropriate but uh, but but beneficial to kind of the feel of all of us who walk around in the streets. Uh, and I think it look it looks it looks quite sensible and, and pretty. So. I'm, I'm supportive of it for that reason. Does anybody like my suit since we're at it? <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Um, that, that was great. Thank you, David, um, for your comments. It's always nice to hear support, um, not just <laughs> negativity from the neighbors. So thank you. Um, I think we are done here with the agenda. Um, it was a short one today, but um, very thorough. Thank you, everyone. Can um, I ask one last question? Uh, just a brief one on the 1637 Naudane property. Sure. Uh, oh, and and just, before, before that, it, 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 I just want to remind everybody, April 26th at 2 p.m. is our hearing. Okay. Great. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, that, that was my question regarding the 1637 Naudane property. Does anyone know when the uh, hearing date is for that? May 3rd, 2 p.m. May 3rd, 2 p.m.? Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you, Ben. Okay, great. Well, thank you everyone so much. Um, I am, um, that concludes our meeting for the public today. So we're going to go ahead and close the Zoom for non-committee members and continue our meeting. Um, off the record, and you guys will all get your um, your notices of decision um, by the end of the week. Thank you, Thank you so much. I, I could tell you that they'll probably be out tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. I was giving you some extra time. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you everyone. Will you stop uh, the recording, Rebecca? Yes, I, I'm I don't know where that button went. Should be on the bottom. Yeah. Um, oh, here we go. Got it.